Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. It is Thursday and I'm starting off a new uh, forum on my channel where I'm going to be just doing individual subjects and I will research the subject and then I will see what the Bible has to say about it and then I will talk about it. And today's subject I wanted to bring up was children and basic, basically raising and disciplining children. I think that this is an overlooked subject and I think it's also important because um, really the youth are our future in America and all around the world. And <clears throat> we should take the time to um, care for them, to discipline them, to encourage them to you know be good parents so whether you are in a, a you're a single parent you know mother or father or you're together with your husband or wife I think that these biblical principles are excellent principles to follow and I believe that they work now that's not to say that a child can go off regardless of whether how good your parenting is because that's absolutely true. We are all individually responsible for our own lives, our own choices, our own sins, and we will answer to God for them individually. But as parents, we also will answer the Lord about, to the Lord for the gift of children to us and how we've handled them. So I think it's always wise to look into what the Bible says about children and how to deal with them and uh, follow what it says. So I'm going to get right into it. So I went through the scriptures about children, uh, disciplining them, uh, them being a blessing and so forth. And I just want to share some of the scriptures that I uh, came up with. The first is that God is the giver of children. The Bible says, Then Esau looked at the women and children and asked, Who are those people with you? And then Jacob says, These are the children God has graciously given to me, your servant. And then in Psalm 113, verse 9, it says, He gives the childless woman a family, making her a happy woman. Praise the Lord. And in the last uh, verse that goes along with that, in Psalm 127, verse 3 through 5, children are a gift from the Lord. So they're a gift to us. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. So, you know, obviously back in the time of the Bible, having a lot of kids was a very um, blessed type of thing, a mentality they had. And since children are a blessing from the Lord, we should never look down on families that have a lot of children. We have a family that lives right down the street from us that um, is also a homeschooling family. I homeschooled three of my four children and they have, uh, you know, I think maybe seven or eight kids right now. And they're, you know, I think they're doing a good job with them. The kids are all always outside playing, having a good time. It's obviously she's not having them on the computer all the time. And it seems like they're raising them right. They're well respected young kids. We've had the boy come and paid him to take care of our animals when we've been out of town and he's done a great job so they're doing a great job so we should never look down on people who you know have a lot of kids or even people who don't want to have kids maybe it is not meant for you to have a child um, if you feel like you wouldn't be a good parent then maybe that is the best choice it's always good to pray about it now then, there's admonitions to children themselves from the Lord, and there's quite a lot of them. And so, um, and it would be good for, you know, us parents to know them and children to know what the Lord says to them. 
The first one is Ephesians 6, 1 through 4, and it's children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. So it's interesting is it doesn't say that they belong to the parents. Actually, the children belong to the Lord because they're actually a gift from the Lord to us. We don't, quote, own them. They're a gift to us and given to us for a period of time and is our responsibility to raise them correctly. And he's telling the children, obey your parents. And then going on, and this is talking about raising children up with the scriptures, which is so important. It says, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up, Deut Deuteronomy 6, 7. So that means in your daily life, model Christianity. Talk to your kids openly about the Lord, about prayers that have been answered. Let them see you praying. Let them see you model Christianity. And when we make a mistake, because we will, we seek forgiveness and say, you know, that was the wrong thing for me to do and explain why it was wrong. And then this is directed towards parents. It says, direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. Proverbs 22, 6. So this is saying to raise your children up in the Lord and they will always have that biblical foundation. So even if they go astray, that they've had the biblical you know, instruction that they can't say, well, you didn't raise me that way. You didn't teach me that way. And they can come back to the biblical instruction that they had and realize that they're making a mistake. You know, all of my kids have gone astray in a certain sense for a short while, while they were young, and then they always came back to the Lord. And they were raised with a biblical, uh, biblical uh, you know, instruction from both myself and my husband. And so they may have gone off to, you know, try to do their own thing and live in sin, but they've always come back to the Lord and they're raising their children that they have, the ones that do, in the Lord also. And then it goes on to say <clears throat> in 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 16, and this was Paul talking to Timothy. It says, you, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, which is the scriptures, knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings, the scriptures, which you are able to which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction for training in righteousness so that man uh, so that the man of God may be adequate and equipped for every good work so basically he was taught um you know Timothy was taught um, by his mother and grandmother who were believers his father was not and he grew up in the scriptures he stayed with the scriptures and he became a vibrant pastor so Paul was telling him continued in what you have learned because there is all these benefits in knowing scripture and what it does for you all the things that I just got done reading and then Jesus himself Said this and I really love this he's and he called Jesus called a child to himself and set him before him and said truly I say to you unless you are converted and become like children you will not enter the kingdom of heaven whoever then humbles himself as this child as he was pointing to this child he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. So there's are very strong words from Jesus Christ himself. 
where he is talking about, you know, you have to have the faith of a child. Like my granddaughters, I'll teach them the Bible, and they are readily, um, very easy to accept it. They do have questions, and I answer them, but they are easygoing in their faith because they have childlike faith. And Jesus is saying, we need to have that kind of faith as a child. And then there's a stern warning for anyone that leads a child astray in bad behavior, bad examples, abuses a child, you know, commits heinous acts against child. He says it would be better for that person to have a heavy millstone put around their neck and be, you know, drowned in the sea. So that is a really strict thing. Now that's not to say that someone cannot be forgiven for those things, repent and go on to seek forgiveness from the person that they've done it for, but they still need to have accountability. And then also Jesus said, beware that you do not look down on any of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly father. So it's seeming to say that children have, of course, like, and I believe all of us do, guardian angels, but maybe they have a special protection over them. We know that children die because the curse of sin has come to the world. So that's not to say that children are going to die. But also I believe that they're covered under Jesus Christ's blood. Because there's an age of kind of accountability for a child to accept Jesus Christ and to have an understanding. And so... The Old Testament kind of talks about that in the past, like <clears throat> sometimes their age was 12. I don't pertain to say anything of knowing that for sure, but I do believe that babies that are aborted are absolutely in heaven. Children that have died are in heaven. I believe that they're covered by the Lord Jesus Christ and his grace and mercy. Uh, but I also do believe that they were born sinners, but his grace and mercy has saved them. And then as they get older, they're coming more and more into the knowledge of sin and being accountable for it and so forth. Um, and there's some people that may take issue with that, and that's absolutely fine. So the next section I'm going to talk about briefly is about correction. Because if you don't correct your child, and I see this all the time when I go out, kids are spoiled rotten. We see a lot of kids doing heinous things, absolutely evil, wicked things, killing people, stealing cars, robbing, beating elderly is just abhorrent. So training your children in righteousness and having discipline is absolutely essential. So I'm going to go over briefly about that and and what the bible says about discipline it said a youngster's heart is filled with foolishness but physical discipline will drive it far away so it's actually talking about spanking a child that is not saying beat a child that is not what people are saying but people some people take that entirely too far and that is not biblical and that is evil but there's nothing wrong with i believe me a swat and I think that this is when it says but physical discipline will drive it away we've actually very rarely had to spank our children when they were young we've given them a swat here and there and that was actually all it took and most of the time after that it took a look and that was it so that is saved for the most disobedient you know uh, cases it should be just a firm backing it up with action of, you know, grounding or, you know, consequences or whatever. So I believe that that should be saved for the last thing. And it should be done in a loving manner and not a hateful, evil, angry moment. And then it goes on. It says, hear my son, your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath to your head and ornaments around your neck. So it's likening uh, teaching kids discipline as a wonderful wreath around their head or ornament, a pretty beautiful ornament on their neck, and, and kids shouldn't forsake them and go against them. Also, the Bible says, honor your father and mother. Then you will have a long 
full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And this was back in the Old Testament. In fact, there was very strict things that happened to kids who dishonored their father or mother back then that taught a lesson to the whole entire community of not to do that. And so, um, and we see if a lot of these kids are dishonoring, even nowadays, dishonoring their mother and father and going off into mass crime, they end up in prison and their life does not turn out what it's meant to be. And a lot of them end up dead, you know, from the crimes they're committing. So this is kind of a self-fulfilling type of thing. And then it goes on to says, children, be obedient to your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. And fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they will not lose heart. That means being a rough, bully, evil father where your children are so exasperated that they literally don't care and they're just going to do it anyways. It should be a loving discipline, but, you know, that can be firm, but loving and biblical, okay? And then it says, to learn, you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate correction. And that would be for adults too. Because if we never take correction in any form, especially from God, we're fools. And we never learn anything and learn anything from our mistakes to grow from them. And then it says about uh, discipline from the Heavenly Father. It says, furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us and we respected them. Shall we not much rather be subjected to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, God does, so that we may share in his holiness. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful but sorrowful yet to those who have been trained by it afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness so that it can come from human discipline you know fathers discipline as they see fit as much as they can in their earthly uh, you know human mindset god does it with an all-knowing concept and what's best for us and if we learn from it and obey from it and we, you know, are changed from it, then it produces righteousness. And the Bible admonishes, it says, do not fail to discipline your children. The rod of punishment won't kill them. So that's obviously saying you're not beating your child, you're giving them a swat, you know, that's just shaping, shaping up, you know, a really bad attitude or a very determinate child that's not going to obey from verbal or consequences or grounding, okay? Then it says, the rod and reproof give wisdom, discipline. But a child who gets his own way brings shame to his mother. And don't we see that all, of, all the time now? Where you see kids back-talking their parents. Um, our kids did not back-talk us. There was one time that, you know, each one of them did, and that was the end of that. So um, it, once you allow that to happen, it continues to happen. You cannot let them treat you like that or get away with that that's totally dishonoring their mother and father you're the one paying for them you're the one raising them it's your home you're feeding them sheltering them so basically they definitely um, should be respecting you and then lastly it says correct your son and he will give you comfort he will also delight your soul because we know that obedient children do um, bring joy to our soul and then it says those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children those who love their children care enough to discipline them so that's where I'm going to end it today so we're at the 19 minute mark it went a little bit longer because actually there was a lot of scripture about raising children and I actually didn't even include all of it so if you want a deeper study into that, uh, or if you're struggling with that, there's a lot of great parenting books out there. But know this, that you are doing a good service to your child for lovingly disciplining them, raising them up in the way they should go, which is the Lord's way, reading the Bible to them, to them you know, explaining it to them, teaching them prayer, you know, um, help having them help serve people, 
Those are all wonderful things. And do not despair if your child is run off and they are living a life of sin. Do not give hope. Give up hope. Keep praying for them and believing that the Lord will bring them back. I hope that everyone has a great day and God bless. I'll see you on Monday.